We'll continue our week of food explorations with our food segment, Savor. Host Will Smith speaks with Sonia Ronghel, owner and operator of Huisache Cheese and Creamery in Ashland. Sonia comes to cheese making from her grandparents. She and Will discuss the work and the craft of artisan cheese making. Hi, everyone. This is Will Smith. This is Saver on Jefferson Public Radio. It is November, and the last few weeks at the farmer's markets have been so uh, fun for me to watch. You could probably get almost anything you could possibly imagine at the farmer's markets the last few weeks. Um, So it's been nice. Thanksgiving's around the corner, and I'm very happy and proud to have a fantastic goat cheese maker here who's right here in Ashland, Oregon, uh, Wisache Creamery. And uh, her name is Sonia Rangel, and I'm very happy to see you today. Good to see you, Will. (laughs) Um, So goat cheese, you know, definitely a niche little business here in town. Um, You're not really involved in the animal aspect of things, but you are you are purchasing fantastic uh, local goat milk. And tell us a little bit about you and how you got interested in goat cheese making. Well, um, I wanted fresh uh, milk for me and my kids. Yeah. And so I uh, was living out on Main Street on a couple hundred acres. Um, It used to be uh, the Pearson Cattle and Hay, which did the pumpkin patch every year. Right. And so my son was about nine years old, and I didn't want to get a big cow because I thought he would get hurt. Uh (laughs) So I decided um, to get a couple of goats to get our fresh milk. And so then... Uh, Things evolved. We ended up moving over to the Billings Farm, which had like 70, sometimes up to 100 goats. And so when I started milking my goat, uh, Mary Billings, uh, now Mary James, uh, she started pushing some of her goats onto the milking session. (laughs) And so we ended up with a huge surplus of milk. And that's how I decided um, to start making cheese. Well, and I, lo- and I love these things that are sort of like that start out as sort of something that is a hobby or something that you want to do something for your kids or something for yourself health wise. And then it's just slowly morphs in- into this other animal. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the, mo- the more important part of it is that you do have a history with the goat cheese as well. Um, with my family? Yeah. Yeah, they were primarily making cow's milk cheese. Right. Um, but they did have some goats on the property. And so I did watch my grandmother make cheese in uh, wicker baskets. And at the time, I was a city girl. And so I was kind of just standing in the corner watching her and my cousin make cheese because I don't think they thought I had any aptitude to make cheese. Right. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Now I'm the only one making cheese in the family. Right. Mm-hmm. And and, wh- and where were your grandparents living? Where was their ranch? Um, their ranch is in Jalisco, Mexico. Yeah. It's in the, the highlands of Jalisco, which um, is now used uh, to cultivate the, the mezcal or the agave for the tequila. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I love the idea of giving your kids all these different experiences with different things. And, you know, had you not maybe had that experience with your grandmother, you wouldn't be making cheese. It, right. It just is like everything, like everything is a stepping stone. And I think you gather info as you go along and I'm oh, always yeah. and, and so many f- farmers we've had on the show have had the same experience of of having you know they're they're either from their grandparents or some family member you know growing vegetables at home and right. it's just something that ignites their curiosity right which I love so so fast forward a bit you're from Southern California grew up in Southern California I did yeah it's me too <laughs> um and um so you got these goats for your, for uh, to 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 get, have some fresh milk in the family, mm-hmm. and then what sort of made you go to the next step? Because it's all again, it's all like the stepping stones. Yeah. So the Billings Farm, um, which were is where we were last milking our goats, they used to be a dairy, and I think they were one of the suppliers to Rogue Creamery okay. um, back in the day, and so um, Mary. Um, had talked about getting her parlor relicensed. Mm-hmm. 
So I went ahead and got some packaging and put some prototypes together for shopping cart and got my foot in the door. So all of a sudden I have product in the store. And so I told Mary, said, well, we got to get licensed and insured now because I've got product in the store. She's like, right. oh, no, 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 no. It's too much work. And, you know, her siblings wanted to sell the farm. Right. And so she didn't want to make an investment because she knew she was going to have to sell. And so I had a friend who was retiring from a commercial kitchen. So I quickly went over there and said, hey, I need, I need this space. You know, I need to get I legit. Yeah. So he put me in touch with the landlord and I easily got into the space. But it was still a lot of work to convert a commercial kitchen into a dairy processing plant. Yeah. A lot of resources. So how long, how long are you in this space now? From... I've been there five years. Okay. Yeah. So we got licensed late 2018. It's been five years since I've had a official dairy processing plant. How did COVID treat you there this three years? Where well, I, yeah, I pretty much shut down the first year. Definitely the first few months, I was very afraid of like having the food sure, sure, be sure. a carrier and having some liability. Sure. So I did shut down for the first few months. And then I might have continued somehow, some way. And then the following year, I just didn't do farmer's markets. Just to remind everybody, this is Saver on Jefferson Public Radio. My name is Will Smith. And I have Sonia Ranga, Rangel here from Wisache Creamery, Ashland. So tell us a little bit about your, your product line. I have the Chef flavor in a variety of flavors. And we have snacks. So I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry for our listeners. <laughs> yeah. And I did have one of my friends, she helped me compose uh, the chef flavors. Um, so today I have a garlic chive nice. um, with black pepper and Meyer lemon, and I have a hierbas de amor. Um, it's coated with olive oil, crushed juniper berries, a tad of bird's eye chili pepper, rosemary, thyme, calendula flower petals, and a little bit of lavender. Wow. That looks beautiful. Yeah. And um, last but not least, our chupacabra is um, coated with the ch- uh, New Mexico chili pepper, garlic, yeah. and olive oil. And it's got that decorative center line just to make it a little more appealing. Yeah. No, they're gorgeous. They're yeah. beautiful cheeses. So what is the length of time that that takes from from having the milk until having that product? Um, it's two to three days. Okay. Well, that's yeah. faster than I thought. Mm-hmm. For the feta, I can do that from one day to the next. These are all chef styles, and I like to do like 12 to 16-hour fermentation. I heard that you have some plans in the future to s- sort of enlarge the product line. I'm trying to um, create a product line for wineries that are just cheese that pairs well with wines. Yeah, excellent. And just target all the wineries here in Oregon. And still goat? I'm going to transition into cow milk. Okay. Mm-hmm. Completely or a separate sort of line? Um, just a separate line. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. And still under your name? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it'll be Wisache Creamery's Winery Collection. Uh, very good. Yeah. Smart. Mm-hmm. I think that's great, you know, yeah. and, I, and I've done my fair share of working at wineries, and I know they would love to have more local cheeses, and mm-hmm. and, and sometimes it's just, it's uh, dicey for them to do that. And, you know, I had, I had sort of an odd question, something interesting that I was reading, in the same way that wine changes every year, because cheese is... Well, organic and well-made cheese, it can also change year to year depending on, I guess, the health of the the feed and the weather. And right. Like yeah. everything's like related. Right. Definitely. So have you noticed? Have you noticed that in your short period of time of producing things that some years are easier to work with than other um, years? I have. Yeah. yeah I have like noticed. A change with the drought. Uh, one of my dairy producers in Klamath, um, he experienced uh, the effects of a drought because he was no longer able to pasture his goats, right. no water. So, and I did notice a decline in the quality. And and so he's supplementing their feed in some way, and then in turn their milk would be different right? in flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So interesting. I did a job many years ago on um, with New Zealand lamb. Mm-hmm. And the grower was telling me that his farm is right on these cliffs near the ocean. And because the ocean sea salt coats the grass, 
that, of course, he felt that that made his lambs t- taste the very best because they were like pre-seasoned, <laughs> That's funny. which is really interesting. But but yeah, and I would think, you know, in drought times, yeah, depending on what that supplemental feed was, that right. would completely alter the product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Definitely. So, so fascinating. Also, knowing that you're from Southern California and the holidays coming up, you did bring something else that I thought was really intriguing that's sort of from your past. Uh huh. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So these are called shongos, and they're like a soft, fluffy, caramelized curd. And it's got sugar and cinnamon, and that's what gives it the color and the uh, sweetness. So do you make the marinade kind of separately and then add your curds into it? Right. To Mm -hmm. marinate. And then how long do you marinate them for? Usually for just a couple hours until it all boils. Kids would love that. Yeah, I thought that would be And adults. I thought that would be a good Thanksgiving treat. Oh, my God. So delicious. (laughs) You also said that with your – the more fresh-style cheeses – that you also do like a mashed potato? I like to use the garlic chive and just mix it in with my potatoes. And I, that gives it that seasoning oh, I flavor. Can yeah. I'm going to try that. My sister, unfortunately, uses Philadelphia cream cheese ah. in her mashed potatoes, which I was never a fan of. But that sounds really good. Mm-hmm. Where can people find your tasty cheese? Um, We're just at the farmer's market and at the co-op right now. Okay. I know you have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people can find you there. Yeah, they can send me a message if they want to stop by the shop and pick up some cheese there. Okay, great. Any trials and tribulations advice you might like to give to some ardent cheese lover who might want to get into the biz? Lots of courage, that's for sure. In addition to all of um, your products, the, the pending... Um, cow milk operation, which is exciting. Your family history in Jalisco. Where does the term Wisache come from? Wisache is a native to the Nahuatl that mm-hmm. lived in um, Jalisco, Mexico. Yeah. And it's the name of a tree. It's more of a shrub. It grows like a weed on my family's land. Mm-hmm. And so they named their ranch El Huisache because it's full of these Huisache trees. Is, do they have a use? Um, it produces yellow fragrant flowers oh. that I know the French used to make perfume out of. Oh, interesting. My mom and my aunts tinkered with making perfume, but yeah. you know, I love that. More play than anything. There is something really beautiful about that that age group. You know, prior to a lot of retail, yeah, my grandmother also only wore like floral scents, and I miss that. Yeah, it is such a great, very natural. It fades. It's it's very pretty. It is yes, yeah. Very, very so cool. this tree is related to the mimosa tree. Oh, uh, so it's oh, got those good. leaflets. Yep. Um, it's got a yellow flower instead of what does the mimosa have? Like a pink or right that purple. The, well, then they they tint as yeah. they candy it, and they, and it, they sell it super bright, like canary. Uh huh. Yeah. And it's got the bean pod that uh, grows, and and it's got thorns as well. Okay. So it's it's kind of a very interesting tree, in my opinion. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like come close and but keep your distance. <laughs> yeah, but the goats used to love feasting on it. Oh, I'm sure. And so then it, that would impart a flavor into the milk. Very nice. Mm-hmm. I want to thank you for being our guest. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to thank you for listening today. This is Will Smith on Savor Jefferson Public Radio. Love to bring you uh, and introduce you to people who bring our favorite foods to market. I appreciate you listening. You can uh, download our podcast on our station site or anywhere where you download your podcasts. Thank you for listening and happy Thanksgiving.